for joining everybody. My name is Emily Telling and I'm a software account executive with HP. Um, on the phone today, we also have Alan Brown, who's my inside sales account manager from the HP team. And we also have quite a few folks from the results positive team. William Bittison, who is a South Central sales director. Jana Batchelder, who is our inside sales and account manager. And then for our technical presentations, we have two fantastic gentlemen who are going to lead us through the solution overview and demo. Wilson Marr, who is a former HP Load Runner product management and marketing manager, who is now with Results Positive as a solution architect. And then Chris Challender is also with Results Positive as a solution architect and product design manager. So I'll let Will go ahead and talk us through the agenda, and we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks again for joining. Thank you, Emily, and good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Today we're going to take a moment to walk through HP's network virtualization software that enables the organizations to emulate and test real-world network conditions that affect end-user and application services. Many of you may already be familiar with HP's Performance Center, Load Runner, and maybe even HP's Application Lifecycle Management. In today's demonstration, Wilson and Chris are going to provide you with an overview of the product and how your organization can benefit. Uh, just a quick introduction of Results Positive. So we are an HP Platinum partner. We cover all the major silos, as you can see, from service and portfolio management to business service monitoring, cloud and automation, big data, mobile, and application lifecycle management that we'll be talking about today. We've been recognized by HP as an industry leader with our Partner of the Year awards, including for Executive Scorecard, Project and Portfolio Management, and Support Partner of the Year. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Will Samar, who's going to walk through a quick agenda of the key points that he's going to hit in his demonstration today, and then lead into the overview. Wilson? Yeah, I'm really excited to be doing this today because the issues that we run into, you know, in the development of applications span mobile and cloud and all those different areas. And it's, uh, but at the same time, we're also getting uh, issues that we run into with accelerated schedules. And, you know, I don't need to get, you know, into this, but we all know that the system's getting more complex and not less. And more importantly, we have more interfaces to like Facebook login that, uh, and Google login, Twitter login, where customers are, you know, consumers are expecting those kinds of interfaces even to our enterprise apps. And there's more and more shift to mobile cellular networks, and along with that, more demanding users, you know, because when people rate our applications out in the stores, a lot of them can be pretty brutal. So the in need for quality right off the bat is really important. So I'll be talking a little bit about today, what can we do to address these concerns and these acceleration of issues that we have? And then to see you know, what we can do, the next steps uh, from looking at all of these items. Uh, let me start off with looking at the network impact of the mobile uh, you know, shift that's going on. The launch application login at the bottom here, view account, that's just some of the example. And when we are in the past, you know, I mean, I've been doing this for about 20 years now, and you know, getting 1.2, 1.3 internally within the firewall is not too bad. But the problem is, is that when we take those same applications, and even if they are the the well tuned internally, when we move it over to Wi-Fi for a, you know on a remote branch, we're finding that the response time actually increases quite a bit. And especially if we get into uh, 4G networks, which are you know, the fastest that we could possibly have uh, for mobile, uh, we're seeing much worse situations. And then uh, when we drop down to 3G networks, like for example on AT&T's uh, network uh, around the country, uh, we're seeing 4.3 seconds response times internally turn into a 22 second response time. And usually that's just unacceptable for many consumers who are expecting a much faster turnaround. The impact of this is not just on response time, but on the amount of money that we spend in servers. So when we have a response of, uh, of 500 users on a server that we can do on a single server, what we're finding is that when we actually get into the mobile side and we're 
you know, working with a lot more external uh, users, the capacity on a 3G network, the servers end up only being able to support maybe 200 users. So that's less than half of what we're able to do. And a lot of the reason has been is that if users stay, you know, inside the system for uh, a longer time, then there's less capacity because it uses up a memory, it uses up, uh, you know, CPU and so forth. So the question is, what can be done? And so rather than taking a totally product-oriented approach, my thought was, let's take a look at this in a time frame, because usually our time frames for development is cut so short in today's world that we really need to take a look at it, of what we can do before, what can we do during development and before production and during production, so that way we can time slot it ourselves rather than uh, just looking at this as a monolithic situation that we've had in the past as an approach. So before coding, one thing that we could do is to use an app that we've uh, provided as part of the network virtualization package. Uh, so people can go to where your customers are like. For example, if you know that your, your app is going to be used in uh, stadiums, for example, then bring this app with you and see how it looks like you know, before a, a game or during a game so you can see what the actual conditions are during that time. And if you can see on the lower left hand is that you know, we show on here the latency and the, uh, as well as the amount of uh, loss and amount of, um, of the up and down uh, process that goes on. And on the right side here is that information gets emailed automatically uh, up to a server that we can, uh, you know, we can aggregate all this information. And this information also is aggregated globally across the various uh, cities. And so we have, I think, like 20 million points that we've saved over time. So what we could do is to say, okay, you know, look at Las Vegas to London. So this, for example, could be we have a server in Las Vegas. What is the response time for our London uh, Londoners, uh, you know, what can they, we expect? And so we could do this on a uh, predictive basis. And later on, you know, we'll show how you can do this uh, using a, a actual uh, run of the system, or we can actually uh, emulate this inside the load runner system or performance center system uh, to emulate this once we get the numbers uh, for the uh, locations and how well they span. The other thing that we can do during development, uh, and a lot of people are using a Google uh, Chrome, for example, and they would have this kind of capability, which is called a waterfall, because this kind of it does, it's called a waterfall diagram because it cascades down. And so one of the things that's important to take a look at is the ones that are taking a lot of time because the size of the download is very high. And so that's where a bottleneck in the transaction can occur. And here I think is probably the most useful for fast development. Now all of you I think may have heard of this idea of test-driven development where you identify the test and you code accordingly. Well, this capability allows us to do what's called a, you know, a systems first uh, idea, or some people call it a configuration first uh, development process, because what we've done is to put together a set of rules, and there's 14 and a few more uh, underneath that that's not shown, that uh, experts have said, okay, if you just do these things, you will have a much better improvement. As a matter of fact, Google has a website where you can put in your web, your host name, and it'll tell you not all of these items, but the key ones in terms of where uh, you are in terms of efficiency. And Google changes the ranking of how your website does depending on whether you're following these rules or you know, their portion of these rules. So what we've done is basically taken a number of different uh, experts' ideas, like Steve Sauters had written a book back in a few years ago, and we've expanded on that and made it very specific to the specific resource that is violating this rule. And I'm saying that this is a, uh, a configuration first because this code on the upper right-hand corner 
gives you a grade. So that way, over time, that you could see as a, from a management viewpoint how we're doing. So that way, you know, the, as people do the development work, you could see how far along we are in optimizing it for Google. That kind of analysis is also available on the mobile, mobile devices, uh, as you can see here on the right. And these mobile devices, you can actually change the network profile in terms of what the latency is and the bandwidth uh, that we have. And when we get those statistics, uh, one of the things that are really special about this uh, performance approach uh, is that we can emulate the various latencies that we have available and say, okay, given a server, we're serving Germany, UK, Japan, and all these various places. As we're doing the run, uh, doing a, you know, a stress test, what is it that the Germans and the UK people are, are going to experience? And so this gives us a really a, uh, you know, as part of the entire process is that we'll do this collection as part of the process, not as a separate task. And that's really important because when we don't have enough time to do all this work, it's, we don't need to add an additional step into the process. And by doing this, you know, this uh, issue with, you know, identifying these issues of the network as we're doing the work, uh, it really makes it, uh, a uh, important parallel process. And the nice thing about this from management viewpoint is that given these runs, I could see on the lower right hand here how many of these, what percentage of these have excellent results, how many people uh, have bad uh, expectations uh, for this, and how many people really shouldn't deploy for. So that is a really important part of it that no other uh, software is able to provide us in today's world. The other aspect of this, I think, is what makes this kind of an industrial grade, uh, professional grade uh, capability that we want to use, is that we want to look at, on an individual transaction level, what the response time is, what is the traffic going back and forth, and how many errors potentially that we're going to have on an individual transaction level. This is really important because when people uh, do the testing, it's often a one specific transaction that is really problematic. And so here we can really drill down to that one specific one so that way we can do some diagnostic and troubleshooting and fixing. The way that we work is that we would have a controller and that then would control the load generators that are artificially loading information, loading transactions uh, that impact the servers under test. So what we've done with network virtualization is that we're providing all the different examples of the uh, 3G, two, you know, 2G, and then 4G, and or even uh, you know, WAN, and all these different uh, networks all at the same time while we're doing our uh, regular testing. So from here, let's take a look at what we can do, right? So my, uh, my invitation to you is to go out to this particular website, this hp.com slash go nv, and read more about it. I've shown you some of the slides from that website, but look down here on the lower right is a trial button. So click on that and then uh, download it and uh, work with it. And if you have any questions or so forth, feel free to give us a call and we're happy to walk you through it. The next thing is that we have Chris uh, who's going to show us the latest version uh, of network virtualization so he can show you the actual screens live and you know highlight uh, dynamically what the newest version looks like. So let me turn it over to you, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Wilson. So once we're uh, logged into network virtualization, this is Performance Center version 12. This is the latest version of Performance Center. So we can select on our test. So we have a network virtualization demo test, which is a simple script that goes out and executes against a flight app. So it just books flights. Uh, we can click on Edit a Test. That will bring up the test and the groups. So we have a couple of groups here. We have West Coast, Asia. So these are different network virtualized locations. So network virtualization allows us to pick from a global library, which they've spent 
as Wilson said, 15 years developing this technology. So all we need to do is simply click on Network Virtualization Settings, and then we can add any location that we'd like to see. So let's just add a new location just for fun. So I will call this San Francisco. Click on Add, and that will pop up our network virtualization software. So we have a custom field, which is default. We have an advanced field that allows us to add some more variables to our script, or we can import from their developed technology. So for time's sake, let's just go ahead and import. So I called this San Francisco. So I'll go ahead and select San Francisco. And then let's test to Dallas because we all love Dallas. Click on the next arrow. This allows us to select which type of network we'd like to see. So we can do Wi-Fi, we can do 2.5G or 2.75G, which is essentially edge network. Um, we can do 3G or 3.5, up to 3 and 3 quarters, which is all technically 3G, just based on the coverage that you have. Or we can do 4G, which Wilson mentioned earlier is the fastest uh, cellular connection. So we can select on 4G. We can pick our provider. So we have AT&T, Verizon, or we can select an other. So I'll go ahead and do AT&T. And then we can also select which type of connection we have. So most people are probably using this during business hours, since that's when you're selecting a flight. If you want to select off hours, that would be between the hours of 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. So we can go ahead and select business hours, and then go to the next. And we have a poor connection, we have a fair connection, and we have a good connection. So we'll go ahead and say, this is good. Once we're done with that, we have our profile. So our profile is now built for G, at and business hours, good connection. Our source, which is our client, is in San Francisco. Our destination or our web server or application under test is in Dallas, Texas. Technology is 4G, carriers AT&T, the time is business hours, and the algorithm suggests that it's a good connection. So once we've validated all of that information, we can go ahead and say OK. Once we're done with that, select our group. This is our new virtual location. Click on OK. And we're off to the races. So then once we're done with that information, we will get to our results. So then we will see, just like Wilson showed you, you'll have web page diagnostics that will show you each step and individual cascading scrolling scripts, JavaScript, um, GIF files, any type of variation on your website will now be available to us in a detailed report. So we'll have our web page diagnostics. We'll have our individual transactions that are broken out for us. So we had the start, we had our fares, we had the select and of the flight, we had the booking of the flight, and then we had searching again after that. Also, we'll have the analytics of the entire web page. So we can tell what the difference was since we ran different locations, different network virtualized services. So we'll have Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G, or 3.5, or all of the uh, different variances. And then finally, we can show the actual individu individual application services. So while it was running, our network virtualized service was able to capture individual pages on our mobile app. So we have our individual locations based on Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G, or 3.5, 3.75, etc.